Hi, welcome to another video in my series on numerical methods of solving equations. Now in the previous tutorials I've shown you how we can go about solving this equation x cubed plus 2x minus 2 equals 0 knowing that it has a root between 0 and 1 and we looked at the bisection method and linear interpolation. Now I want to show you how we can solve this equation by using the newton raphson method. And this is a very powerful method, very quick, but it has one drawback, and that is sometimes it doesn't converge to the root. But in the examples I give you now, okay, it does converge to a root. So what is the newton raphson method? Well, first of all, this is the formula, and I'm giving it to you without any proof, okay? It's an iterative based equation here. If we know an approximation for a root, let's say we call it xn, then we can get the next approximation, a better approximation usually, xn plus 1 by this formula. That next approximation is given by xn, the first approximation, minus f of xn, all divided by f dash of xn. So, I'll show you, give you an example then, how we can find the root for this equation. Now, what we need to do is define f of x, first of all. So, in the usual way, is make sure your equation does equal zero, though. So, if not, just rearrange it so it equals zero. And then, just say, let f of x be the left-hand side of this equation here, which will be x cubed, in this case, plus 2x minus 2. Now to use the newton raphson formula we need to find f dash of x. f dash is the first differential of f of x with respect to x. So therefore f dash x, if we differentiate this with respect to x, for x cubed it's going to be 3x squared and for 2x it's going to be plus 2 and the minus 2 just goes to 0. So f dash x then equals 3x squared plus 2. Now we know that there's a root between 0 and 1, and we have tested that in the past because if we put 0 in here, we get minus 2, and if we put 1 in here, we get 1. And so there's been a change in sign over this interval. So we know that there's a root in that interval. So if we take as our first approximation, let's just say let x1, some books will use x0 here for the first approximation, it's up to you, but let x1 be the first approximation. And I'm going to take 1 as the value. Now, what we do now is we get x2, a better approximation, hopefully, when we let n equal 1 here. So we get the second approximation. So therefore x2 will be equal to, according to newton raphsons formula, xn, in this case x1, which is going to be 1, minus f of x1. So we've just got to put 1 through f of x. So we're going to have 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 minus the 2, okay, f of 1. Then we have to do f dash of 1, all right, so let's just put that in here. f dash of 1 is going to be 3 times 1 squared plus the 2. Now if you work this out, you get your second approximation, which comes out to be 0 0.8. So now that we have x2, we can get a third approximation to the root, x3 in other words, because if n equals 2, we've got x3 here. x3 will be equal to x2 minus f of x2, all divided by f dash of x2. x2 being 0 0.8 then, we can just write this in as 0 0.8 minus f of 0 0.8, so put that in, 0 0.8 cubed plus 2 times 0 0.8 
minus 2 and that's all divided by f dash of x2, f dash of 0 0.8. So put it into here and we've got 3 times 0 0.8 squared plus 2. And if you work this out you'll find that you get 0 0.77142 and so on. So to two decimal places, well this is going to be 0 0.77 but we can't stop here because we've got to make sure that we have no change in this third digit here. So we need to carry on this process. Now I've got this calculator over here because in doing this, just setting it out like this, it takes obviously quite a while to do. But there is a quicker way that we could work through these calculations when you have iterative based type formulas. And that way is that we just type in your first approximation into your calculator and I'm assuming that you've got a scientific calculator with an answer button, ANS, here. Okay? Because if you have, then as I say, you can do this a very quick way. And you should be familiar with this way anyway from just basic iterative methods that you should have done earlier. But anyway, just to recap, all you do is you type 1 into the calculator, okay, and then just press equals, okay. So as soon as you press equals, this becomes the answer. It remembers that ANS represents the value that you've got here, in this case 1. So just clear the, that value off by pressing AC so the screen will clear and 1 is stored in this value here as ANS answer. So now you just need to type in this particular formula only we need to replace XN with answer. So for this part we just hit the answer key and you should find that you get ANS come up on the screen and then enter negative okay or minus there and you most probably have got a fraction button somewhere on your calculator okay if you've got a fraction button that you can use then we need to enter f of x n and in this case it will be the answer cubed plus 2 times the answer minus 2. So you'd have answer cubed, okay, plus 2 times answer, or just 2 answer, and then the minus 2. And then we divide this all by f dash of xn. xn, remember, will now be our answer button, so it'll be 3 times the answer squared plus 2. So 3 times answer squared plus 2. Okay, so every time you get the answer, just keep pressing that. And you should have that on your display. And then when you press equals, it's passing your first value for answer, which was 1, through this equation here. And you should find when you press the equals, you get 0 0.8. And then if you press equals again, you'll find you get the third approximation, 0.77142, and so on. And if you keep pressing equals, you'll get your next value, x4 in this case. And if you do that, it comes out at 0 0.7709, and so on. And if you do it again, you'll get x5, and that's 0 0.7709, and so on again. And so this saves a lot of time if you can do this. And you can see that we have no change in the third decimal place here. So to two decimal places, our root then x will be 0 0.77 then to two dp, two decimal places. Okay, so it can be very quick to do this. Assuming though that it does converge to a limit. As I said earlier, in some cases using this method you'll find that it doesn't converge to a root. I'm not explaining why in this tutorial, okay, but the questions that you generally get given will converge to a root. 
What I would suggest you do though is try this with another value. I mean, I just started off with x1 equaling 1. We know the root lies between 0 and 1. So why not try as an experiment? You could pause the video, okay, but try say x1 equaling 0 0.5, value midway between 0 and 1. Type in 0 0.5 into your calculator, press equals, and then clear it from the screen, and that is your answer. Enter this formula just like this, the answer minus answer cubed plus 2 times answer minus 2, all divided by 3 answers squared plus 2, and keep pressing equals. And you should find that you get your next approximation, x2. x2 turns out to be 0 0.81818181, or 0.81 recurring. x3, do that, turns out to be 0 0.7722, and so on. x4, if you do that one, turns out to be 0 0.7709, and so on. And when you come to doing x5, you also get 0.7709 and so on. So you can see, by taking a different value here, we still end up with 0.77 to two decimal places. It converges to that root. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea then on how we can use the newton raphson method then as another method of finding or locating a root. But as I said earlier, it does have one drawback. Sometimes it doesn't tend or converge to the root. So you've just got to be aware of that problem. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.